Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former U.S. Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan, along with West High School educator, Nicole Wrights Larson, and student Fifi Tekla Medahan. Good morning, and uh, I'm thrilled to be able to ask the questions and not have to answer and play Oprah here for a minute, and you have two extraordinary guests. Uh, I don't say this lightly, Nicole is the, the computer science teacher in Utah, and her enthusiasm is, in, is infectious. She single-handedly quadrupled diversity metrics for the state, and we'll get into that a little bit. And Fifi's a 10th grader, one of her students, and I'll just say, I don't know where your parents are. I know they're here. They should just be extraordinarily proud. And uh, she's a remarkable, remarkable young woman who want, you know, many of us might be working, working for someday. Um, I'll put you both on a little bit of a spot to start. Uh, you had her first and seventh grade. How's Nicole as a teacher? Nicole was really fun as a teacher. <laughs> I think computer science as a whole was such a novelty to me, and she really helped me deal with that and channel that excitement in a way where I could really learn about computer science and um, progress really easily. And we're going to get into sort of diversity and what we need to do collectively to bring all talent into this space and, and have the state and the nation benefit from that. Nicole, you started this journey uh, somewhat drafted into it in 2012, not that long ago. At that point, there were five computer science teachers in the state, and they were all men. And were you welcomed with open arms into that club, or what was that like trying to enter this new world? It was a real challenge. I was a business teacher, and I taught German, and I was kind of voluntold in the spring that I'd be teaching five new computer science classes in the fall. And so I reached out to the teachers that I knew, and a lot of them were really surprised. They hadn't ever been asked what they teach or how they teach it or why. And so it was a big challenge trying to get the support I needed to feel ready and prepared in the fall. And there are barriers for teachers, and teacher training is a huge part of what we're trying to do here, but there are also real barriers for students to have access to computer science. And talk about what those barriers are like. I think that's a huge question. Most people aren't aware of some of these barriers that students face, even trying to get into a computer science class. Only 66% of the high schools in Utah offer computer science. Many of those schools only offer one or two classes. And so it's kind of the luck of the draw. If your counselor or a teacher saw predictability in you being successful or you fitting into computer science. And so one of the challenges for teachers is making sure you are intentional about allowing all kids access, not putting a prerequisite on students and really finding kids in the hallway, hey, I really want you in my computer science class, I feel like you'd be amazing, and helping them then feel welcome in your class. And for, again, for you to single-handedly quadruple diversity metrics, that's a really deep statement. What do you understand or what do you see that maybe other teachers don't quite fully get yet? Wow, that's a, a <laughs> full-loaded question. <laughs> Many teachers are great at their content. One thing that we lack as teachers is the ability to use inclusive and equitable teaching practices where our classroom is a culture where students want to be. Whether you have students that don't speak English or students who have had multiple summer camps of computer science, you have them all in one space. So making that space equitable where they want to come, they feel comfortable, they feel like they have a voice that you want to listen to, where you engage them. Uh, there's little tricks that teachers uh, learn in professional development, which is part of where that seed funding is going to go, where if you have students in a classroom, being intentional about how you lay out the activity. If I have an activity where we're going to do something with Legos and I want them to write an algorithm or a set of instructions for them to d decide how this Lego was arranged, who am I going to have use the Legos first, and who am I going to have scribe? And so those types of trainings are things that a lot of teachers aren't aware of, or they have to pay for them by themselves, or districts don't offer that kind of support. And so that equitable inclusion is huge, because once you get a student in class, retaining them is really hard. And that was one thing that Fifi mentioned a little bit earlier when we were backstage, is her experience in a computer science class where she was, there was two females in there? Yeah, there were actually two females. 
Um, I was the only freshman in that class, and I was the only um, colored student in that class as well, which was really hard to get over. So instead of focusing on my learning, I actually focused on the demographic more. And that was hard. Well, let, me, let me just push you on that because it's, it's interesting. I always say that talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. And our job as educators and leaders is trying to make sure opportunity meets talent. What you told me actually stunned me. You said that you were one of two black students to take CSA last year, not in your class, not in the school, but in the state. What does that feel like to be one of two kids in the state having access to that kind of opportunity? Well, I kind of feel like a number, honestly. I feel like I just kind of beat the odds and was just one of those um, outliers. And my success wasn't really anything that should be noted, even though fortune shouldn't really play a part in whether I got access to CS education or not. I should have just been able to take the class as a kid, not a colored kid or a female. So how do we... <laughs> And I think what you said is really profound. I think you are an extraordinary young woman, but you're not unique. There are lots of extraordinary kids out there who didn't quite have the opportunity. So what do we need to do to make those kinds of opportunities the norm, not the exception? So we have thousands of young women, thousands of students of color going through this. What needs to change? Well, I think the resources need to be brought directly to the kids. So instead of just putting an opportunity out there, Try to bring the opportunity directly to the kids so they don't have to work to actually access it. And also minimize those little things like feeling encouraged or not having transportation or even awareness about the opportunity. So I think everybody, especially the leaders, can help with that by donating their time and resources and showing kids that whatever they do can be applicable to any career they go into. Because I know a lot of people in here work directly with tech, but there are also a lot of companies where tech is just um, on the sideline. And just knowing about tech um, could honestly help kids in whatever career they want to go into. Nicole, there's so much I admire about your leadership, but one of the things that is the most meaningful to me is you could be working statewide, you could be working nationally now, and you're making a very, very conscious choice not to become an administrator, and we need great administrators, but to stay in the classroom. Why is it so important for you to stay grounded and rooted in the classroom? I will say that I love students. I had the opportunity to work on a national level with Code.org, and I love doing outreach. I loved helping, computer, uh, helping superintendents see that computer science was important. Most of the times when I would go talk to a group of 30 superintendents, they said, yeah, we've got computer science, and they had computer literacy type classes like Word, PowerPoint, keyboarding. And I said, those are great classes as a consumer, but we need our students to be creators. And I felt like I was helping students get access, but I didn't feel the fruits of what I was doing. And so I said, I need to go back to this class where I can be an advocate for students, where I can have them in my class and do exactly what Fifi mentioned. Make engaging experiences where they see that they have fun, they can do this. I feel like a lot of times students aren't recognized as being able to do hard things in a way that's manageable. Computer science is a literacy that provides opportunities and future power for kids. And if we don't give them those skills, how are they going to be prepared for the workforce? We're doing them a disservice, and it will affect generations of students and educators if we don't step up and talk about these barriers. One of the things that I noticed when I was teaching is that I could get a student into my class, we were doing AP, they were doing great, and then there was this $94 test fee. Mm. And I had 120 students and I had 70, that, 70 students that couldn't afford the $95, $94 test fee. Mm. So there I was out trying to recruit to companies saying, hey, do you want to sponsor a student to come help take this test? And for students to have to find that money themselves when they are low income or have other different barriers, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. And yeah. so if you don't have a teacher being intentional about some of those things that, that students face, students aren't going to stay in those classes because they see that as a challenge that they can't overcome. Right. And what are you hearing from students? What are you learning from students? What do you want an audience like this to, to know who they don't have the, the joy, the privilege of being in a classroom every day? Students want to know how computer science affects them and what the jobs are. So often they don't make the connection of, hey, we're doing this in programming or we're learning about global impact. How does that apply to me in the future? And so students need to know where computer science 
affects them. We can tell them all day long as a teacher, but until they see like a day in the life of what you do and what kind of skills they need, they don't see the application of it in class. Yeah. And so that's what students need. Tell them how you work at Spotify and it uses a database. And when they click on those songs that they like, what's happening in the background? And then what job and college do I need to go to to do that thing? Because they don't know. And as teachers, we don't know either. Most teachers are a, a business teacher, a math teacher, maybe even a social studies or PE teacher that gets voluntold. You're going to teach one section of computer science. So even as a teacher, you don't even know what all you can teach your kids. So there's that disconnect of how do I help prepare my students if I don't even know myself what the jobs are out there. Yeah. yeah. Two final questions. I wish we had more time. Um, but Fifi, you got a room full of thousands of leaders here who want to make a difference, who have a heart for this, who are committed, but they're not living your life every day. How do you like these leaders to think about interacting with students like yourself? What can they do to be helpful? Well, I think um, following up on what Ms. Wright Larson said, it's really about investing your time and showing kids where their future lies in terms of technology. So just going in for a day and talking about how your career, whether you're a doctor or you're a software engineer, like coming in and telling them that this is how my job interacts with technology, it just helps kids to understand that whatever um, endeavors they go to, they can apply computer science and the education that they're getting at that level. And last question, Nicole. Part of the reason I'm here is I think Utah has a chance to do something very, very special in this space long way to go, but you've come a long way. What's your vision for this community five years from now? What do you want computer science education to look like for this state? I would love to go with the initiative that we have started, where we want computer science in every school, K through 12, with multiple touch points and experiences for students to have, whether it's in kindergarten and they're learning, hey, when we do this game, this is an algorithm, how we line up or how we do this thing. If students don't have access at an early age where they feel comfortable with computer science topics, they're gonna get to middle school and kind of like filter themselves out of, that's not for me, that's for those kids. And then by the time they get to high school, who would sign up for an AP class if they'd never had exposure when they were younger? Yeah, yeah. So to see computer science in every school at every level, multiple touch points. And educators who are prepared and trained to help these students out and having the industry step up and be part of that. Help us educators out so that we can promote students into what you do as a career and build that pipeline and offer that funding. Yeah, no, that's perfect. The vision of business and schools and community coming together to just create something special, not just for Utah, but a, a model for the country. That could be extraordinary. Please give a huge round of applause to Utah's future, Nicole and Fifi. <laughs>